Java 23 has been released on the 17th of September and in this video I want to summarize what all new features are in this release. There are 12 new JDK enhancement proposals and I want to divide them into two groups, the first one being the new JAPs and the second being the returning JAPs which we have already seen and which are being previewed or incubated again. In JAP 455 you can now use primitive types in pattern matching and also instance of and switch statements now work with all primitive types. An example can be seen here where we use the instance of operator on a primitive type and also a switch expression uh, with primitive type patterns. With this JAP, when writing Java docs, Markdown is now also supported instead of only HTML and Java doc add tags. On the left here you can see the regular Java doc documentation and on the right here you can see the Markdown documentation. There are a couple key differences to note. A couple examples here are that the paragraph tag in HTML is replaced by simply a blank line in uh, Markdown and also Markdown supports the reference links where you can link to other objects or uh, methods. JAP 471 deprecates the memory access method in Sun MISC unsafe. Uh, so Sun MISC unsafe is an infamous class that provides a way to perform low-level operations. Most of its methods are used for accessing memory. However, as the name suggests, it is unsafe to use it. Over the years, alternatives have been introduced, with the latest one being in JDK 2022, where the foreign function and memory API was introduced. And with that introduction, memory access methods in Sun MISC unsafe will first get deprecated, and by JDK 26, they will start with actually removing these methods. Then we have JEP 474. The Z garbage collector has two modes. In the future, they will focus on the generational mode to reduce the cost of maintaining two different modes. According to the proposal, generational ZGC should be the better solution for most use cases. With this JEP, they added a feature to import all packages that are exported by a module. Many classes like list, map, stream, and path are often used, but not automatically imported. This can result in some wildcard import statement, which is not always in line with coding guidelines you may use, or your company may use. So instead of writing statements like these, where you individually import all these classes, you can now replace it with import module java.base, which will then import all the 54 packages that are exported by the Java base module. And then we go to a series of returning JAPs, which we have already seen before. The first one being the class file API introduced in JDK 22, and it provides a standard API for parsing, generating, and transforming Java class files. Class files contain the compiled Java bytecode, and the format can change with every Java release, so every six months. There are many libraries and frameworks that interact with these compiled class files, and currently a third-party tool is the most used way to do this. But with this JAP, frameworks and tools using the standardized API will automatically be able to do so when a new JDK is released. With JAP 469, the Factor API is back again, and it is an API that expresses vector computations that reliably compile at runtime to CPU-supported vector instructions. This is the eighth time that the Factor API is shipped with the JDK and it has no changes from the previous release. With JAP 473, stream gatherers will introduce the support of custom intermediate operations. They were first delivered as a preview feature in JDK 22 and the API has not changed. They are simply looking for more feedback. JAP 477 wants to allow developers to start writing code faster without the well-known public static void main boilerplate. It will also make Java more beginner friendly. It was already introduced in J uh, JDK 21 and had a second preview in JDK 22 and is now back for its third preview. Implicitly declared classes now also import static methods for simple textual I.O. with the console. And also all public top-level classes from the Java base module are automatically imported. See the JAP we talked about earlier. So as an example, we see the previous iterations here on screen. We went from a public class hello world with a public static void main method to class hello world with a void main method and if the class name was the same as the file name you could even uh, leave out the class hello world and just simply have the void main method. This left the confusion of the system out print line method where users were not familiar with uh, what system dot out dot even means and it's now possible to simply declare void main and then uh, statically call the print line method and output hello world that way. Structured concurrency is also a reoccurring guest in the JDK. It aims to simplify concurrent programming by introducing an API for structured concurrency. It treats groups of related tasks as a single unit of work, thereby streamlining error handling, etc. 
The contents of this API has not changed since its first preview in JDK 21. Then we have JEP 481, scoped values. Scoped values will enable a method to share immutable data both with its colleagues within a thread and as well with child threads. In JDK 23, it has one change where the method callWare in the scoped value class has been changed to a functional interface. And lastly, we have JEP 482, flexible constructor bodies. In Java, constructor bodies are quite inflexible where explicit calls to super or this need to be made before you do anything else. With this JEP, some flexibility is added by allowing you to initialize the fields of the class before referencing the instance under construction. So for instance, you can validate the value of the field before calling the super class constructor, which would be unnecessary in case the validation fails. Okay, that's all for Java 23. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment or reach out to me on Twitter or X. And I'll see you in March with the release of Java 24. Thanks, bye.